So, the new explosive changes that have happened to Path of Exile. Well, we'll start with the uh, basics first. Because a lot of news has actually come out in the past, like, week or so. So, first of all, to finish off the Affliction League, which is this one, uh, all your characters are going to be migrated to Standard. Uh, we have found out that Tinctures and Charms are going to be deleted. Uh, Ascendancies are not going to be moved uh, into Standard or brought into the next League yet, unfortunately. Uh, all Affliction Uniques are been sent to the Core Drop Pool. And Wildwood Rucksacks, which are the extra inventory you had uh, while in the game, are now removable tabs, it, like in towns and hideouts. Finally, corpses that uh, the itemized corpses that we had in the league are now going to be still a thing, but they won't be obtainable in the next league. So they'll just remain in standard, basically, which is kind of sad, honestly. I really hope they put some of those corpses in the game somehow because they were really good. And itemized corpses is a better way to do specters than anything else. Next, we had a quick patch note come out the other day. There have been some major engine changes. They have finalized everything that they need to do for DirectX 12 renderer, and that is now in its release form. So they have considered it, they believe it is stable enough for it to be in release. Uh, they've added uh, support for dual DualShock controllers, done a little bit of uh, basic stuff, and most importantly, a lot of it is just major engine changes. There is a big patch right now. If you want to keep up with uh, Path of Exile, I would highly suggest that you go and download the patch whenever you get the chance and clear out your cache uh, as part of like loading up the game for the first time after the patch. Uh, hopefully, these changes are going to resolve some of the obscene issues that we have had with performance in Affliction and in the leagues before that, because just our performance has gotten worse lately, and I really hope that they have fixed that. Okay, now on to the actual news. So, there have been some pretty crazy stuff that have happened with uh, Path of Exile and Necropolis. So, they haven't actually acknowledged anything that is going to be content in the league but i genuinely don't care because what they have announced is quality of life changes and the quality of life changes that they are introducing make it feel like they actually are paying attention to the community here let's watch the first like 30 second video hi i'm mark roberts game director on path of exile in 324, the Masters, Alva of Incursion, Nico of Delve, Einhar of Bestiary, and Jun of Betrayal will no longer be mutually exclusive and can appear in the same map. Speaking of Betrayal, we're making the following changes. The Ashling reward of Remove a Random Modifier, replacing it with the Veiled Modifier instead, has been moved to the function of the Veiled Chaos Orb, and has been removed from safe houses. Veiled Chaos. Wait, is that not what it already was before? No, before it was basically re-roll an item that has a Veiled Modifier on it, giving it a new Veiled Modifier. This can work on non-Veiled items to just add Veiled Modifiers. That means that Veiled Chaos Orbs are way more important. And also we're not gonna have to worry about selling Isling Crafts anymore. That's no more services for Island, Island Crafts. That is now an item. That is nice. That is very nice. Chaos Orbs will now exclusively drop from Katarina, the leader of the Immortal Syndicate. That's fair. This makes the orb more powerful, but also allows for full trading of this craft between players and a more clear path to target farming this orb by maximizing your Katarina kills. I will definitely say that up until this point, I never used Veil Chaos Orb. Like, ever. There's just, I just never saw a point. Like, this actually genuinely makes me feel like I might use a Veiled Chaos Orb for something now. The capability to add higher than 20% quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal, and these reward outcomes have been replaced. 
Your flasks can now be corrupted by Valorbs, which will add a random quality value from minus 10 to plus 10. Good luck. The okay, so what it's talking about is that it can increase the quality up to 30% if you have a 20% quality flask or drop it down to as far as 10%. So basically, do not corrupt unqualitied flasks or you will at most get a 10% quality flask that cannot be increased. To plus 10. Good luck. Stead been moved to Bestiary League. Since the captured monsters in Bestiary can be traded, you can now trade for the amulet craft at your leisure. We'll talk Wait, we can now make talismans on demand? Oh my gosh, the biggest change in the world. What are we going to do? You might see someone use a talisman like 0.01% of the time now. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm I'm not unhappy that they're moving at, they're moving a lot of the crafts to bestiary stuff. Like I think that's or not a lot of the crafts that they're moving a lot of the crafts to just general stuff. That's good. Talismans are still worthless. They're just still worthless. That's that. If there's not, <laughs> they're just not not good. They're just not good. They're just not good. But this makes them slightly less not good. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. We have a short and sweet update for you today. The breach hand chests spawned during breach encounters have always been very annoying to click on in the heat of battle. In 324, we will be changing them to no longer require clicking to open. Just run near them, and they'll open automatically. Okay. I will say that is, like, the, one of the most obnoxious possible things. I have died trying to open a breach hand before. Like, it is, like, not even once. Like, that is a big problem. So, you know what? Big quality of life change. I really appreciate that. Really do. The next one, I also appreciate a fucking lot. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. If you're the kind of player that uses a lot of socket altering currency to craft your items, this one's for you. When applying some currency items like orbs of fusing or jeweler's orbs, you will now be able to constantly use those orbs without having to repeatedly click your mouse or the equivalent on controller. As long as you hold down control and left click, you will use orbs until you run out or until the goal is achieved. Meaning that jeweler's orbs can be held down on an item until it achieves maximum sockets, or orbs of fusing can be held down until it achieves maximum links. That also means that armor scraps and weapon and whetstones can be held down until you reach 20% quality. Uh, catalysts can be held down until you reach 20% quality. Glass blowers, baubles, gem cutters, prisms, everything that is quality currency can be used like that. That is a really big change. I have had to spam click so much to do that. It is, it was not a good system. The fact that you can now can just control left click and have it just fill up to maximum. Great. And for those who aren't familiar with Jeweler's Orb specifically, uh, it will keep going until you hit six sockets. It will not change your six sockets away. Same thing with the six links. It'll keep going until you hit six links. It won't. It will stop there and wait for you. I don't know how many people have like been spam clicking and clicked a few times after the thing is six linked. But just so people who aren't familiar with it know, that is the way it works. Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, game director on Path of Exile. Today, we've got a handy new shortcut for you when trading with other players. By holding down Control and Shift, you can click a stackable item to move all copies of it in your inventory straight into the trade window. I cannot tell you how many times I have been converting currency from Chaos to Divine, and usually the way it works is you have somewhere between 1150 and 1200 chaos and that equals about five div in most leagues that's what it kind of works out to 1200 chaos is entire inventory's worth 
So you have to manually click, you have to click 60 times originally to do that. And if you misclick, which I've done a number of times, you usually end up having to click about 65 times to complete that one trade. Now you click once. This is an extremely big quality of life change for people who have to currency convert a lot like me. It is so obscenely huge. I, I can't, I can't clarify enough how big a deal this is. It also means that if you're the type of person who, when your stuff gets sent to standard, you want to take some out of your remove only tabs, put them into your normal tabs, you can now do that at lightning speed, which is fucking amazing. Also, this is click stackable items. This kind of makes me wonder if at any point we'll be able to do this maps specifically. That would be nice. And finally... Hi, I'm Mark Roberts, Game Director on Path of Exile. This is the first in a series of videos covering the upcoming changes in 324. In an effort to streamline the process of making multiple characters, we're changing how Pantheon powers work. When you upgrade a Pantheon power with a Divine Vessel, you will now get to keep that upgrade on all characters- Whoa, hold on! Hold on! They just glossed the fuck over that like that was nothing. They just right clicked on the filled divine vessel and it went right into their pantheon. What the fuck? That's not how that works. You have to go specifically to Act 10 to talk to Sin. Get, or not, okay, not necessarily Act 10. Like anywhere between like Act 6 to 10 to talk to Sin. Which changes which town you automatically respawn in. And then go back to your hideout. Being able to right click on your just divine vessel when you get it, like when it's when you filled it, that's a big deal. Why did they just gloss over that? Like that's not a big deal. That's a big deal. Unless that's like just some bullshit way to like uh show what they're doing in the video. But like if you seriously can just right click on it and it goes random at your pantheon, that would be fucking amazing. It's across the league. Each character will still need to defeat the gods to unlock the base pantheon powers, but the upgrades will only need to be acquired once per league. We'll talk more about what we're doing Ooh. with this content in our- Whoa. What was that? Upgrade effects do not apply until the quest blank 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 is completed. Okay, so because you'll now be able to complete all your Pantheon stuff that you need on one particular character, or on any any character basically, and it'll affect all characters, that means that if you are raising a uh, secondary character, basically you have to finish a certain set of things before you get access to the uh, bonus Pantheon powers. If I were to guess, it's basically saying you need to complete the campaign and then it'll unlock all the bonus stuff that uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to do normally anyways. So that's not a big change, but it is nice to know that uh, you will be able to just not have to do it twice. That also means that Divine Vessels are going to decrease in price in this league than they were in... Well, okay, the last league was fucky, but... Uh, in general, Divine Vessels will be more common now, because before, you needed to have... Let's say that you don't need to swap your stuff around too often. You know exactly what you need for your Pantheon. You need four Divine Vessels. Three for your Major God, one for your Minor God. For that character. If you, like, have no exactly what you need and have no intention of changing anything. Well, if you have three characters, that's twelve Vessels. If you want to do it in a way that's just like, well, I use Rislatha on most people, so I'm just going to upgrade Rislatha as my only minor god, and I'm never going to upgrade any other minor gods on any other character, ever. Well, you need one Divine Vessel to do that, rather than having to upgrade Rislatha on every single fucking thing. It's great, because the problem isn't always just getting Divine Vessels, it's also getting that character to that boss at whatever fucking tier it's at and unlocking it because holy shit sometimes they will throw you just like like tier 16 maps and that's where you have to go to get your boss you can't go anywhere else and it's like but why does reduced chill effect require me to reach red maps 
before I can use it. Like, that, that just feels a bit silly. It is nice to know that, like, if you have a secondary character, that you can use your primary character to get some of the higher level stuff that they need so that they can level through the end game more smoothly. That I really like. Also, one last thing I want to bring up. Masters are now mutual are now no longer mutually exclusive. So what that means is it doesn't matter whether you say, hey, I want a Nico mission on this map, and then June can still appear, and Alva can still appear, and Einhard can still appear. That's great. Now, this has a number of different effects. First one, it always used to be that if you let's say let's say I pick Einhard. Well, if I have a Scarab that also adds Nico to the map, that before it would block you, and I would always forget <laughs> every time. And I would have like Master Scarabs, and it'd be like, wait, you can't do this. And I'd be like, oh. But now you can. Also, a another a <laughs> another weird side effect of this is going to be that you can double up with both Nico and Einhar. Why is that important? Well, the reason why that's important is that Nico has sulfite intoxication that you can spec into on the tree, which for every sulfite node you click on in a map, you get 30% increased damage, I think 10% moved uh, increased movement speed, and 1% increased all maximum resistances, which is great. Before, you weren't able to have him with Einhar. Now, you'll also have Einhar on maps if you want to make sure you have both on a particular map, which will make managing to get to higher level maps a little bit easier if you're struggling. Einhar is a bunch of nice defensive boosts, so when he's near you, he gives life regen, life leech, and life on kill. Plus, he also will fight with you if you have the node that specifically allows him to do so. So, Einhar is like a nice little distraction as well as a defensive buffer to have if you're feeling weaker, and Nico makes you faster and deal more damage. So between the two of those, with the two setups that you can have in your Atlas passive tree, it actually will help you wander through the upper level maps with a bit more ease. And this won't really affect the people who are high level, like who are really, really of like ridiculous builds, because they're not th these little bonuses aren't gonna mean much to them. But to us, if, like, you have a weaker build, this will actually be a big deal. Plus, you can also have Huck, who will give you a, an extra aura, too. So you can have Sulfa Intoxication, Einhar following you, and Huck following you with the damage, attack speed, and movement speed buff, as well as his aura. So you can have Blessing of the Ancients from Einhar, Sulfa Intoxication from Nico, Aura from Huck, and Battle Ready from Huck. All, all on you at once in one map. So if you have a really hard map, you can just have a party of people following you around. Welcome to D&D with NPCs. Okay, and that is all of the Path of Exile stuff that has been released so far. Tons of quality of life changes. I'm very excited to actually play the league just because of all of these. I, I mean, I'm sure there's gonna be content for the league too, but holy shit, this stuff is really nice. This is going to save my finger from clicking so much, being able to just apply all of your shit with like one click, being able to just do the same annoying thing less. Like, it's, it's just so important that they've added all of these little things. And it felt like for the longest time, and this is more like a couple leagues and before, ago they kind of just ignored us like it felt like ggg kind of just didn't care what we felt and no matter how much we talked about things on public forums like the path of exile forums or on reddit they kind of just dismissed it all as like oh people are just whining well no actually a lot of it was whining yes that's true but there was a fair bit of good quality of life criticism that was just leveled at them that they just completely ignored. I feel like with the last, let's say, league or two and this league, 
they are now actually trying to pay attention to us. They've actually decided, hey, our players' feedback is important. They're not just memeing. Maybe we need to pay attention to the problems in the game that exist that have made this game kind of pointlessly unpleasant for people who play at the top end or even at like the mid end. It's it's just a really nice thing to see. And I'm really happy to hear that they're working on all of this basic shit that will make a league a lot funner to play. Because no matter what, I pretty much always make two, maybe three characters in a league. So I know that I'm definitely going to get the benefit of the Divine Vessel stuff. And I'm always going to use the uh, stackable currency stuff like a ton. In general, this will be a very big change to the comfort of players. And I really appreciate that. So thank you, GGG. I appreciate you listening to us and honoring our opinion because while a lot of it is bullshit and whining and complaining and all of that shit, there are actually good points that some people have made over time that they have ignored. And the fact that they're paying attention now makes me very happy and I appreciate that and I appreciate being part of this community because of that. So thank you. Hey, you got this far in the video. Thank you so much. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to see uh, this content in its uncut form, we have our other channel, at Black Cat Streams, in the description. And if you want to see us live, uh, come join us on Twitch, also in the description. Thank you so much. Hope to see you in the next video.